Atika Ubaka presidential campaign organization yesterday said Nigeria did not need a leader whose idea of development was to move the country from rotten to bad. It was a reference to the presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC, Ashur Ajibola Ahmed, in Ubu. The campaign team of the main opposition People's Democratic Party PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar alleged that Tinubu represented the greatest threat to national cohesion and democratic norms. However, the All Progressive Congress Presidential Campaign Council says presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party is only paying lip service to national unity. Bayo Nonuga, Director of Media and Publicity of the Council, says Atiku has resorted to ethnic jingoism in the face of imminent defeat at the 2023 elections. According to him, Atiku's recent statement to the effect that Northern Nigerians do not need a Yoruba or Igbo president was the worst expression of ethnocentric opportunism ever uttered by a former vice president. Responding to the APC statement, the PDP dismissed the allegations by the ruling party that the PDP presidential candidate was playing ethnic politics, saying in one statement by one of his spokespersons, Kola Olubudiyan, that the ruling party's comments best describes Tinobu. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NMPP Senator Rabi Musa Kwankoso, said he will not attend the interactive session with the presidential candidates organized by the Arewa Joint Committee scheduled for today. Speaking through his spokesperson, Horipo Abdelmuin Jubrin Kofa, the presidential hopeful also urged the Arewa Joint Committee to desist from endorsing any presidential candidate at the planned interactive session. According to a letter signed by the spokesperson, he stated that the campaign group had credible information in its possession that showed that some people have been compromised and included plans to turn the event into an endorsement platform for a particular candidate. All right, a lot to talk about this morning, Dr. Abati. Okay, number one, it's uh, quite unfortunate that uh, uh, Dr. Kwan Kwan Su wants to opt out of the session uh, being organized by the uh, Arewa Joint Session, which involves the Arewa Consultative Forum the Northern Elder Sorum, and other groups. Uh, the argument put forward by his uh, representative, his spokesperson, is that he is accusing the Arewa groups of being partisan, of being biased. Uh, but the details of this, you know, uh, we do not know what it means by this uh, uh, partisanship because I have not seen anywhere where the Arewa Joint Session has issued a statement endorsing any uh, particular candidate. I think the point to be made here is that, uh, you know, the uh, various, uh, you know, presidential candidates, 18 of them in this uh, race, the 2023 race, should avail themselves of every opportunity to sell themselves to Nigerians across constituencies, across platforms. Uh, the spokesperson of uh, Dr. Kwan Kwasu says they have credible information. What is that uh, credible information? I will not be surprised if the organizers come forward later uh, to say that they are not biased. Uh, but that's not the issue. I think every candidate should make use of every platform to engage with Nigerians uh, wherever those Nigerians uh, may be. Now, the second issue has to do with uh, the front page story uh, that you read out about uh, the PDP uh, saying that, uh, well, um, uh, the Nigeria needs a particular kind of leader, uh, a leader that will not take Nigeria from uh, a rotten state to a bad state and all of that. Well, of course, it's political season. You are likely to find, you know, politicians marketing themselves, demarketing others. Uh, but all should be reminded that having signed the uh, peace accord and having publicly told us that uh, they will commit themselves to uh, decent politics, the politics of issues and ideas. They devalue the process by descending to the level of abuse and vitriol that we witnessed over the uh, weekend on both sides of the two major political parties. Now, you quoted the uh, uh, PDP spokesperson, mm. you know, attacking uh, the uh, presidential candidate of the APC. Mm. APC uh, spokespersons attacking uh, you know, uh, the uh, presidential candidate of the uh, PDP. What is the issue here? Now, uh, Ashwadubala Ahmed Tinubu was said to have spoken at the Kaduna Investment Summit. 
And in the context of that, as the video that is in circulation has shown us, he was uh, praising Governor Nasir Rufai and saying to him, look, I know you will be tempted to say you want to go for further uh, education. The reference to the fact that after being a minister, uh, Nasir Rufai uh, went to the Harvard Government of uh, Policy. Uh, he also took a degree in law. So after being a governor, you probably will say he wants to go and take uh, you know, additional degrees. And the man was saying, look, we need your skills here. So the context <coughs> is very important because he was praising uh, you know, Governor Nasir Rufai on that particular occasion. But he then made a slip of the tongue, uh, you know, saying that, oh, you've done well here. You've moved Kaduna State from a rotten state to a bad state. What is the difference between a rotten state and a bad state? More or less the same thing. But people understood the context. Because after all, what is communication? It's also about context. It's about, you know, how it is uh, perceived. And uh, uh, Bayo Anonoga, spokesperson for the campaign, had issued a statement saying that it was a slip of the tongue and that that was not what he meant. Of course, that uh, slip of the tongue, other people have said it must be a Freudian slip. But I don't think uh, Governor Nasir Rufai himself uh, sees it in that context. That's the uh, uh, first part of it. And of course, you know, spokespersons of the uh, uh, PDP immediately went after uh, Ashwa Dubola Ahmed uh, Tinubu, you know, uh, making fun of him, making jest of him. As it then happened, the candidate of, uh, of the PDP also speaking, you know, um, in his base, in his major base in the north, he, he was said to have told his audience that, look, Northerners you vote for a Northerner. But in that same quoted, famously quoted passage, he said, oh, he's a man, you know, who has built bridges across uh, Nigeria, vote for a Northerner, you know, who is a bridge builder, uh, but uh, Northerners should prefer a Northerner. Of course, the APC machinery also went after him, from Festus Keyamo, who accused him of desperation, to uh, Femi Fani Kayode, uh, who tongue-lashed him, to uh, Bayo Nonuga himself, uh, to Felis Moka, uh, the spokesperson of the, uh, of the party. Okay, so this morning, you see the uh, PDP also pushing back and attacking you know, the leadership, uh, the candidate of the uh, uh, APC. Well, what is our interest in all of this? What we're looking for is the politics of ideas, is the politics of issues. In Atiku Abubakar's case, he is accused of making a statement that does not show him as a unifier. He is accused of playing ethnic politics, of being an ethnic champion, ethnic and regional champion, to borrow the words of uh, Kingsley Mogalu, a uh, former presidential aspirant, who in fact asked him to apologize to Nigerians. And who said, you can't say you are a unifier on one hand, and you'll be telling Northerners to vote for only a Northerner. However, the converse of it is that all politicians do this. After all, as the PDP has reminded the APC, what is the difference between Atiku saying that uh, a Northerner should vote only for a Northerner? What is the difference between Yoruba Lokon and Emi Lokon, you know, phrases associated with the uh, presidential candidate of, uh, you know, the uh, APC? What is clear is that ethnicity is going to be a major factor in this 2023 election. The politicians must not play divisive politics. Even when, as Atiku Abu Baba can try to do during the weekend, even when they try to rally their base. Number two, religion is already a major issue in this 2023 election. One of the spokespersons of the PDP accused uh, Bola Ahmed Tunumbu of the APC of playing a uh, uh, religious uh, politics of religion with the same faith uh, ticket. All of this, you know, marketing, demarketing, does not address the main issues. What Nigerians want to hear about is what are you going to do about this uh, foreign exchange problem that we face? What do you intend to do about Naira that is yo yo yin on uh, almost a, a daily basis? Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you want to do about? transportation. What do you want to do about this perennial problem of flooding? We don't get these concrete ideas. The spokespersons 
or the surrogates, as they are called, they go into overdrive when they see a small opportunity to engage in vitro. No, that's not good enough. That is not good enough. And we hope that everyone will just realize that signing a peace accord and uh, giving peace a chance is not just about physical violence. There's also verbal violence. There's also psychological violence. And we expect that Nigerian politicians will begin to conduct themselves after the fashion of gentlemen, even if they are not. One thing is certain, Dr. Baji, from all of this we're seeing, is the fact that politicians in the course of this weekend has just shown who they are truly to Nigerians. And I think it's time for Nigerians to open their eyes and tell themselves the truth. Because the problem with some Nigerians is they perpetually live in self-deceit, propelled by their own personal interest and proximity to the center of attraction of all these politicians. That is what heralds their voting system. That is what heralds the message of participation they share with others. What Ms. Atiku Abubakar has said is not different from what politicians have been saying since the 1959 federal elections in this country. It is all ethnic-based. Have you ever wondered why the Northern People Congress won major seats in the North, Action Group, major seats in the West, NCNC, major seats in the East? So from then on, it is obvious that politicians just polarize. But the difference between those politicians and these politicians is that at least those ones still talked about the issues. I was watching a campaign of a politician in the 60s where he was talking about how, what he wanted to do to increase minimum wage. That was Chief Awolowo. The problem is that these ones are not even talking about the issues. It's just about vitriols and action and reaction. And what they do is they talk about these things to sway you, the voters, from the main issues. What are the issues? As we speak today, the so-called East-West Road, that was a major campaign point, has been cut off because of the floods. Why do we have floods? Because since 1982, that the Lado Dam was completed in Cameroon, that was supposed to build our own dam, that was supposed to provide 300 megawatts of electricity, nothing has been built. So the East-West Road has been cut off, 700,000 people displaced because of the floods. Isn't it shocking that over the weekend, none of these key politicians took out time to say what they would do as regards the flood? All they were doing was just bantering amongst themselves. So I'm not surprised that a political candidate said that to his base. And it is shocking that these are the same politicians that will come out to say that tribal religion doesn't matter. But they are the ones stoking the tribal sentiments. And they are the ones stoking the religious sentiments. So I beg you, politicians, what do you truly want to do for Nigeria? Do you really love this country or is it about you and the interests of you and your cronies? Please, isn't this country bleeding enough on its knees? I beg you, at least pity this country. And for the one that said from rotten to bad, he said he's asleep. The question is, are these sleeps getting one too many? It's a political season that we should debate on the ideas. And let us look at the ideas critically. And for the other candidate that said, uh, that said he will not attend something because it's like an endorsement of another candidate. You see, I keep asking the question, are you there to face the people and expose your ideas to the people? Or you are there to play a popularity contest with your opponents? Yes, you might have a point as regards that because that's what politics is all about. Averagely, a man that will go into politics will most likely have a big ego before he goes into politics. But please, with all the ego, I will beg politicians to also think of the people. The people that are suffering, that want to hear those ideas. People that want to hear the interaction and the debates. And that's why the debates must be made essential. We hear that the NESG group will be organizing a debate on the 15th of November. If they truly love Nigerians, they should start by attending the debates. We'll move on to Ikiti State. 
It's got a new governor now, Biodo Yebanji of the All Progressive Congress. He took office on Sunday with an assurance that residents of his state and his determination is to bring dividends of democracy to the grassroots people and overall benefits. The event was obviously well attended by the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bolatinubu, Governor of Edo State, Governor Baseki, among other dignitaries. Oyebanji promised that to lead to a government that will be committed to the economic prosperity of the residents of Ekiti State. I am here for Ikiti. Ikiti State belongs to us. What is happening today is not about the party. There must be a governor at every time in the state. Irrespective of the outcome of election, this is our state. And my being here is for Ikiti. And I'll continue as long as I live to be here in such occasions for Ikiti. Dr. Abati, new dawn. Okay, congratulations to uh, Mr. Biodun Oyebanji, who is now governor of Ikiti State. Mm. He had been uh, secretary to the state government, and he takes over from uh, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, uh, whom uh, in whose government he served as secretary to the state government. And he was the victor in the June uh, uh, 2022 gubernatorial election that was keenly contested. But he got majority of the votes, over 187,000 votes, to his closest challenger, Shaguni, of the uh, Social Democratic Party, who scored about uh, 87,000 votes, and Bisikola Wale of the People's Democratic Party, who came a distant third. And despite all the uh, protestations about the, uh, that particular election, yesterday he was uh, sworn in as governor. Uh, at a 10,000 capacity pavilion uh, that was filled to the brim, attended by the presidential candidate of the uh, APC, seven APC governors, leaders of the uh, All Progressives Congress, and of course it was uh, a very uh, colorful event. So congratulations to him uh, as governor and also to his uh, deputy uh, chief, Mrs. Uh, uh, Afuye, uh, who is uh, deputy governor now, in Ekiti State. Now, two things from that event, apart from the fact that it was colorful and well attended, you know, the crowd in different kinds of family attire, this message by the governor. Governor Yebanji yesterday made it clear that he will, he will run a government of inclusion. He says he will play the politics of oneness, or if you like, the politics of unity. And we take from that that, you know, he's not governor of APC, as it were. He's governor of everybody in Ekiti State. So when he said Ekiti Kiti, you know, that uh, call out is to all the people of Ekiti State. And we hope that he would, you know, do his very best, uh, you know, to uh, uphold a tradition, you know, of service to the people. He's, he set out uh, a six-point agenda. One, he wants to continue with the vision 2050, uh, that has been put in place by the uh, uh, FIME administration. And some of the highlights of the things he talked about, rural development, developing agriculture, investing heavily in free and compulsory basic education for the people of uh, Ekiti State, human capital uh, development. Uh, all of this, you know, are useful, very good. But it should now move from rhetoric to action. And talking about action, uh, he seemed yesterday to have demonstrated the importance of, well, maybe continuity because of his experience and background, having been uh, SSG. He more or less hit the ground running. He made two quick appointments. Uh, Dr. Uh, Abitat uh, Adubiaro, you know, uh, a university teacher, was appointed secretary to the state government. And uh, Yinka Uyibode, who had served, uh, Kaode Fayemi as governor and minister, uh, was uh, retained as chief press secretary uh, to the governor of Ekiti State. And he also gave a directive immediately to all financial officers 
uh, in ministries, departments, and agencies in uh, Kitchi State to freeze all government accounts. Okay, so having been SSG, I uh, assume that you know, he has an idea of the system. So that uh, made it possible for him to hit the ground uh, running. Well, beyond all of this, we'll see how it turns out. We would like also to congratulate uh, Dr. Kaladi Fayemi, uh, the now outgone uh, governor of Ikiti State. I think Kaladi Fayemi has had a brilliant run. He, he's been governor two times now. He had the first time, he came back for a second term. He has served as Minister of uh, Solid Minerals at the uh, federal level. Uh, he has been uh, chairman of uh, the Nigeria Governors Forum. Uh, in the course of all of this, he managed to write about two, three books and a number of uh, countless essays, you know, and now uh, he was also a presidential aspirant. So he leaves that office, you know, uh, with his head uh, held high. And that event showed how he himself has been able to uh, mobilize a lot of, uh, you know, constituencies uh, in that state. And congratulations also to his wife, uh, B.C. Fayemi, uh, who has been uh, very supportive of her husband, and who in our own right, you know, uh, made a very strong contribution. Right, every time there's a handover of power, it just shows you the transience of power. And for those that will do anything to have power, even kill, remember that leadership should be dispositional, not positional. Governor Fayemi has served well as the pos in the position of the governor. Kudos to him as he leaves. A new man is there, Mr. Oyebanji. Kudos to him as he emerges, as he's there. But true leadership is not about the position. It should be dispositional. And that's what our leaders should remember. Most importantly, I wish him the best. Ikiti has a lot of potential, but it's not punching yet. And he needs to punch. Ikiti Kete, Adaraf Ikiti. It will be well with Ikiti. But leadership, vision, Capacity to be able to transform the state with so much potential should be the watchword. Most importantly, for you to do any great thing, your road will be rough. You'll face challenges and all the things like Taishula races. But in the end, if you can stay true to your dedication to the people, you'll do well. <coughs> so, Governor, may your road be rough like Taishula says. I wish you the best.